So in this video, I want to introduce you to two really important concepts for this unit. The first is the mole, and the second is something called the molar mass. Now the mole is, here are two examples of moles, but this is not the mole that we're talking about in chemistry. Although one of these moles is quite beautiful. I love its claws, so attractive. And look at those beautiful whiskers too. So the mole sort of has a tendency to freak out students, but you shouldn't be freaked out by the mole. It's just a number. Like, so for example, if I say to you a dozen, you don't freak out, ooh, a dozen. I mean, a dozen's 12, like it's a way of counting eggs, you know, a dozen eggs. Same with a pair, if I say you've got a pair of shoes or three pairs of shoes, you know that three pairs of shoes is six shoes. So what is a mole? Well, this is the number. It's 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So that's what a mole is. It's just a number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23. It's a big honker number, that, but that's all it is. It's just a number. And when we look at it written out, it's huge. Now, it's often referred to as Avogadro's number. Um, Avogadro is this attractive gentleman down the bottom. He was an Italian chemist. Uh, it was named in his honor. He didn't discover this number, but uh, they did name it after him. And sometimes we've heard the Avogadro's number or Avogadro's cons constant. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And you can count anything with this number. So it can be the number of particles. It could be the number of atoms, ions, molecules, whatever you want. We just, in chemistry, we count in moles. We say, how many moles of this or how many moles of that? And yes, you should definitely memorize his number. You need to memorize this number, okay? So you need to put a box around this puppy and memorize it. Now, in chemistry, um, we're going to use the mole as a way of counting uh, atoms. Now, why do we do this? Well, atoms are ridiculously small. So, for example, uh, let's pick, look at coins. Coins are also really small. So anything that's small typically is counted by weighing it. So if you go into a supermarket and you want to take one and two cent coins and throw them in the machine, that machine is actually weighing all the coins that you put in there and it knows the average mass of a coin, and it uses that average mass to count how many coins you've entered into the machine and therefore work out the amount. It's the same thing with atoms. Atoms are also very small. So if you want to count atoms or compounds, we count them by weighing them. So for example, um, in this image here, there's some charcoal, and we're going to assume charcoal is pure carbon, and you can see it's got 12.00 grams there. I can actually tell you how exactly how many atoms of carbon are in that by using that mass. And so we're going to use moles to count atoms. One of the things that we'll also be doing is using chemical equations. And so here is a typical balanced chemical equation. This is a combustion reaction. And in the past, you've been used to saying, oh, two molecules of ethane are going to react with seven molecules of oxygen gas to produce four molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. But from now on, I want you to think in terms of moles. So an alternative way of saying this equation would be this. Two moles of ethane will react with seven moles of oxygen gas to produce four moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water. So when we look at these coefficients, which are the red numbers in front of the formulas, we're going to think about moles from now on. Okay, so we've talked about the mole, so let's now talk about this word called molar mass. And this is an important concept. What is the molar mass? Well, it's just the mass that one mole of a substance would weigh. So what is the mass of one mole of a substance? And its units are grams per mole, or G divided by MOL. So MOL stands for mole. So it's grams per mole. This is also a really important thing to memorize. You need to know the units for molar mass. It's grams per mole. Now the great news is you can easily find the molar mass 
for every atom using your periodic table. So if you look here, here's a periodic table, and if we look at in the center, uh, put a little box there illustrating carbon, and you can see there are two numbers in that box. The top number is the atomic number, which is the number of protons. And then down the bottom, the 12.01 is what we call the average atomic mass. The units are AMU, and that's the number of protons and neutrons. And it's an average because there are different isotopes of versions of carbon. Well, this is the thing. If you take the AMU, that is the average atomic mass, that is also happens to be the molar mass. So if you just change the units to grams per mole, that is the molar mass of a carbon atom. So what this means is that if you weighed out 12.01 grams of carbon, you would have exactly one mole. So all of these, so likewise, all of these average atomic masses, for all of these elements, these are the molar masses. So you can get the molar masses for every single atom from your periodic table. Now when um, you use a molar mass in a calculation, you should always have at least three sig figs. Now there are some numbers that you cannot round. So for example, if you look above at copper, it's 63.55. You can't really round that to 63.6. I don't want you to do that. So you would just have four sig figs. So all of those elements above, you would have four sig figs in their molar mass. So magnesium's molar mass would be 24.31 grams per mole. But there are other numbers or other elements that you can round. So for example, hydrogen. It's 1.008. You just round that to 1.00. And same with carbon. You would just round that to 12.0. So there are some, uh, and sodium, let's take sodium, for example, number 11 there. You would round that, instead of saying 22.99, you'd just say 23.0 would be its molar mass. So I want at least three sig figs for every molar mass that you use. So typically, though, we won't be talking about just atoms. We'll be talking about compounds. So here's an example. What would be the molar mass of ethanol which or alcohol? Its formula is C2H5OH. Well, all what you do, you would do is go to the periodic table. You can see that there are two atoms of carbon, so it's going to be 2 times 12.00. There is a total of six hydrogen atoms, notice there's a hydrogen right at the end of the formula, so it'll be 6 times 1.00, plus 1 oxygen atom, and so that comes to 46.00 grams per mole. So this would be the molar mass of that molecule. So once again, if I weighed out 46.00 grams of this, of ethanol, I would have exactly 1 mole of ethanol molecules. Lastly, I'm going to add this little bit. It's not as important, um, but it's worth sort of putting a little box down. There is something called molar mass, and this will not really apply in this unit, but it will apply in later units when we talk about gases and climate change. So molar mass, sorry, molar volume. So one mole of a gas, and it can be any gas, so one mole of a gas at STP, and I'll talk about that in a second, will always, always have a volume of 22.414 litres. or 22, You can round that to 22.4 litres. So if you have 22.4 litres of a gas, you've got one mole of gas. That's what the molar volume is. Okay. Now, STP just means standard temperature and pressure. So you don't need to worry about it in the context of this unit. Although when we talk about gases, we'll come back to this. And all that is, is this is zero degrees Celsius and uh, one atmosphere. Okay. Okay, so that's it. So this is hopefully giving you some introduction to the concept of the mole and the molar mass. And so make sure you've taken notes on these and we'll talk about it next lesson. Thanks.